Adhara is a bright star in the Northern Hemisphere constellation of Canis Major. Also home to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, Adhara, also known as Epsilon Canis Majoris, is far less known despite its relative proximity in Earth's sky. Adhara, however, is anything but a regular star from the perspective of planet Earth. Adhara holds an ancient secret that spans the length of time. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, we're going to discover what our ancestors may have seen in their skies. So, let's get to it. Adhara shines at plus 1.5 apparent magnitude. It's actually a binary star, but the light of the primary star is so bright that it overwhelms the companion in small telescopes. It ranks a relatively unremarkable 23rd on the brightest stars list, in between the Lion King of Regulus and Shaula from Cassiopeia. Adhara lies some 570 light years from Earth. Indeed, although very large compared to the Sun, with around 13 solar masses and 14 solar radii, Adhara isn't all that impressive when compared to some of the supergiant stars in our local area. B-class Adhara would be just a run-of-the-mill giant if it weren't for one thing. A few million years ago, it was much, much closer to the Sun than it is at present. In our local area of stars, we can find Alpha Centauri, Sirius and Procyon, alongside many other subgiant stars and dwarfs. And sure, some stars, like those, are relatively bright, but this is mostly because of their proximity and not their luminosity. But we wonder then, what would it have been like if a truly huge star like Adhara were close to our solar system? Some 4.7 million years ago, humans were diverging from our closest relatives, chimpanzees. It was around this time and shortly afterwards that indeed we began walking on two legs. During this same time period, the star of Adhara was just 34 light years from the Sun. At such a close distance, you may have already guessed that it became far and away the brightest star in the sky other than the Sun, and reached a maximum magnitude of a staggering minus 4. This is remarkable as no other star has attained this brightness since, nor will any other star attain this brightness for at least another 5 million years. We might wonder then, if the creatures that inhabited our planet back then, could really have appreciated the fact that they were able to see a B-class star so close by. Adhara would have been a permanent feature in our skies, shining all day and indeed night if we looked from the right vantage points. Much like Venus today, it would have been bright enough that even the sun's glare would not have always been sufficient to occult it. But unlike Venus, it would not have disappeared behind the sun, or like Mercury often is, be too close to distinguish from the sun's glare. Alongside the Sun and the Moon, Adhara would have held its own in our skies, day and night, month after month, and year after year. Our Earth, unlike anything we've ever seen, would have had two daylight stars. In this depiction, we see a mountainous jungle scene somewhere on the Earth. In contrast to the warm yellow light of our Sun, Adhara on the high left would have shone with a much sharper blue-white light. Even as many as 34 light years away, a permanent feature in the sky. It does make me wonder what Adhara would have looked like if it had strayed even closer. Given that Epsilon Canis Majoris is not hugely famous, I suspect that only a few star nerds, of which I of course include myself, may have heard of the star beforehand. And Adhara, as I've just mentioned, carries the designated name of Epsilon Canis Majoris. Indeed, in 2016, the International Astronomical Union organized a working group on star names to catalogue and standardize proper names for stars. That group decided that individual stars should have names rather than entire star systems. What this meant is that on the 21st of August 2016, the name Adhara was approved for the star formerly known as Epsilon Canis Majoris A. This interestingly also meant that more famous stars, most prominently Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, were also re-designated with the proper names of Rigel Cantorus and Tolimen, amongst other less famous stars. So we know that Adhara, or Epsilon Canis Majoris A, is the principal star, but there is also a companion in the system that remains without a designated proper name, and is therefore still known only as Epsilon Canis Majoris B. I did indeed scour the internet to find information on this star, but it was few and far between. Since Adhara, the primary star of the system, is approximately 250 times brighter than its companion. Without figures relating to the radius or temperature of the star exactly, it is difficult to know exactly its class. The absolute magnitude of a star is defined by the magnitude it would have had if it were viewed from a standard distance of 10 parsecs or some 32.6 light years. This leaves Epsilon B with an absolute magnitude amounting to plus 1.9. 
So for the purposes of this video, and now moving slightly into the realms of speculation, I've decided that Epsilon Canis Majoris B, Adhara's partner, to be most likely a high order A-class main sequence star, substantially larger than Sirius, but a bit like the star of Vega, not quite as bright enough on its own or massive enough to join the B-class, at a best guess of course. Returning to the principal star now, Adhara punches above its weight in the sense that it emits a total radiation equal to an amazing 38,700 times that of the Sun. This means the star is the brightest source of extreme ultraviolet in the entire night sky, which is indeed quite an achievement as I'm sure you can appreciate. Adhara is the strongest source of photons capable of ionising hydrogen atoms in the interstellar gas near the Sun, and this makes it very important in determining the ionisation states of the local interstellar cloud. In Chinese, Wu Shi means bow and arrow, and this refers to an asterism consisting of Hadhara alongside other relatively bright stars. Unfortunately though, for Chinese folklore, Hadhara arrived just a little early for humankind to aim its own bow and arrow in the sky. Like a giant big sister, Hadhara came by our solar system for a visit, some 4.7 million years ago. It showed its face for a while in our skies, before fading away slowly into the distance. This type of incredible celestial view won't be seen here again on Earth for many, many millions of years. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you can consider buying me a coffee. My link is in the description. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could also be just your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well. I'll see you on the next one.